Come hither, sirrah. Can you cut off a man's head? If he be a bachelor, I can. But if he be a married man, that is his wife's head, and I can never cut off a woman's head. Come, sir, leave me your snatches and yield me a direct answer. Tomorrow morning ought to die Claudio of Barnardine. And here in our prison is a common executioner who lacks in his office a helper. If you will take it on you to assist him, it shall redeem you of your jives. And if not, well, you'll have your full time of imprisonment and your deliverance with an unpitied whipping. For you have been a notorious bawd. <laughs> Madam, I have been a bawd for time out of mind, and yet I would be glad to be a lawful hangman. I would be glad of some in extra instruction from my fellow partner. What ho! A borson! Where's a borson there? Do you call, ma'am? Sirrah, here's a fellow will help you tomorrow in your execution. If you think it meet, compound with him by the year and let him abide here with you. And if not, we'll use him for the present and dismiss him. He cannot plead his estimation with you, for he hath been a bard. A bard, ma'am? <laughs> Fie upon him! He will discredit all mystery! Oh, go to, sir! You weigh equally! A fellow would turn the scale! <laughs> Pray, sir, by your good favor, for I good favor have you, but that you have a hanging look, do you call your occupation a mystery? Aye, sir, it is a mystery. Painting, I have heard, called a mystery. And your whores, using paint and being of my profession, do make my profession a mystery. But what, profe uh, what mystery there may be in hanging, if I be hanged, I cannot imagine. It is a mystery. <laughs> you proof? Every true man's apparel fits your thief. If it be too little for your thief, your true man think it big enough. If it be too big for your thief, your thief think it little enough. Mm. So, every true man's apparel fits your thief. Oh. Are you agreed? Madam, I will serve him, for I do find your hangman to be a more penitent trade than your bawd. He doth oftener ask forgiveness. You, Sirrah, provide your block and your axe tomorrow, four o'clock. Come with me, bawd. I will instruct thee in my trade. Follow. I do desire to learn, sir. And if you have occasion to use me for your turn, you shall find me there. For you have done me a great favor, and I owe you a good turn. You call hither Barnadine and Claudio. The one has my pity and not a jot the other being a murderer, though he were my brother. Look, here's the warrant, Claudio, for thy death. It is now dead midnight, and by eight tomorrow, thou must be made immortal. Where's Barnaby? As fast locked up in sleep as guiltless labor, while it lies starkly in the traveler's bones, he will not wake. Who can do good on him? Well, go prepare yourself. But hark, what noise? I then give thy spirits comfort. By and by, I hope to some pardon or reprieve for the most gentle Claudio. Welcome, father. The best in wholesome spirits of the night in Bella Cupid promos. Who called here of late? Who oh, none since the curfew rang. Not Isabel? No. They will then, ere it be long. What comfort is it for Claudio? There is some in hope. It is a bitter deputy. Oh, not so, not so. His life is paralleled even with the stroken line of his great justice. <laughs> he doth with holy abstinence subdue that in himself, which he spurs on his power to qualify in others. Where he knew with that which he corrects, then will he tell us. But this being so, he's just. Ah, now have they come. This is a gentle provost. Seldom when the steel jailer is a friend of men. Oh, how now, what noise? That spirit's possessed with haste, that wounds the unsisting postern with these strokes. There he must stay until the officer arrives to let him in. He is called up. Have you no counterman for Claudio yet that he must die tomorrow? None, sir, none. As near the dawning, Provost, as it is, you will hear more ere morning. Happily you something know. Yet 
I believe there comes no countermaid. What example have we? Upon the very seat of justice, Lord Angelo, hath the public ear professed the contrary? Oh, this is his lordship's man. And here comes Claudio's part. My lord has sent you this note, and by me this further charge, that you swerve not from the smallest article of it, either in time, matter, or other circumstance. Good morrow, for as I take it, it is almost day. I shall obey him. This is his pardon, purchased by such sin, for which the pardoner himself is in. Hence hath offense his quick celerity, when it is born of high authority. When vice makes mercy, mercy so extended, that for the fault's love is the offender friended. Now, madam, what news? I told you, Lord Angelo, belike thinking me remiss in mine office, awakens me with this unwanted putting on. We think strangely, for he hath not used it before. I'll pray you, let's hear. <clears throat> Whatsoever you may hear to the contrary, let Claudio be executed by four of the clock, and in the afternoon, Barnardine. For my better satisfaction, let me have Claudio's head sent to me by five. Let this be duly performed with the thought that more depends on this than we must yet deliver. But fail not to do your office, as you will answer it at your peril. What say you to this, sir? Well, what is this Barnaby that is to be executed in the afternoon? A bohemian board, but here nursed up and bred. The one that is a prisoner nine years old. Well, how came it the absent duke had not either delivered him to his liberty or executed him? I have heard it was ever his manner to do so. His friends still wrought reprieves for him, and indeed, his facts till now with the government of Lord Angelo have come into an undoubted proof. It is now apparent. Well, most manifest did not deny by himself. Hath, hath he borne himself penitently in prison? How seems he to be touched? Oh, a bear that apprehends death, no more dreadfully than as a drunken sleep. Careless, reckless, and fearless of its past, present, or to come, insensible of mortality, and desperately mortal. He wants it back. Oh, he will hear none. He have evermore had the liberty of the prison. If given leave to escape hence, he would not. Drunk many times a day, if not many days entirely drunk. We have very oft awaked him as to carry him to execution, showed him a seeming warn for it, and it hath not moved him at all. More of him anon. There is written in your brow, Provost, honesty and constancy. If I read it not truly, my ancient skill beguiles me. But in the boldness of my cunning, I will lay myself in passion. Claudio, whom here you have warned to execute, is no greater forfeit to the law than Angelo, who sentenced him. To make you understand this in a manifested effect, I crave but four days' respite for the which you are to do me both a present and dangerous courtesy. Pray, sir, in what? In the delaying death. Alack, how may I do it, having the hour limited and an express command under penalty to have his head in view of Angelo? I make my case as Claudio's to process and smallest. By the vow of my order, I warrant you if my instructions may be your guide. Let this Barnardine be this morning executed in his head or to Angelo. Angelo hath seen them both, he will know the favor. Oh, that's a great disguiser. And you may add to it. Shave the head and tie up the beard and say it was the desire of the penitent to be so bared before death. You know the course is common. If anything fall to you upon this more than thanks and good fortune, by the saint whom I profess, I will plead against it with my life. Pardon me, good father. It is against my oath. Were you sworn to the duke or to the deputy? To him and his substitutes. You will think you have made no offense if the duke about the justice of your dealing? But what likelihood is that? Not a resemblance, but a certainty. Oh, yet since I see you fearful that neither my coat, integrity, nor persuasion can with ease attempt you, I will go further than I meant to pluck all fears out of you. <laughs> Look, you madam. Here is the hand and seal of the duke. You know the character, I doubt not, and the signet is not strange. Well, I know them both. The contents of this is the return of the duke. You shall anon overread it at your pleasure, where you shall find within these two days he will be here. Now this is a thing that Angelo knows not, for he this very day 
receives letters of strange tenor, perchance of the Duke's death, perchance entering into some monastery, but by chance nothing of what is writ. Look, the unfolding star calls up the shepherd. Put not yourself into amazement how these things should be. All difficulties are but easy when they are known. Call up the executioner and off with Barnardine's head. I will give him a present shrift and advise him for a better place. Oh, yet you are amazed. Oh, but this shall absolutely resolve you. Come, let us go. It is almost cleared on. <laughs>